TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Unidentified aircraft strike Iranian proxy militias in Syria in an attack Damascus immediately attributed to the Israeli Air Force. The United States and Egypt hold a strategic dialogue summit to discuss bilateral challenges and opportunities. The Iranian armed forces alongside the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps concluded a wide-scale military exercise this morning titled Zulfakar 1400. Jerusalem regards its assistance to Palestinian residents of Judea and Samaria on economic and civic levels in Israeli interest. In an address to a conference on democracy organized by the Israeli daily Haaretz, Defense Minister Benny Gantz highlighted that while advancing civilian steps for the betterment of lives of the Arab inhabitants of the disputed territories, in tandem, the Israeli defense establishment persists with moral determination in its struggle against terrorism. ואנחנו מאפשרים צעדים כלכליים ואזרחיים שלא קרו כאן כבר שנים. אנחנו עושים זאת בראש ובראשונה מהיותם בני אדם, אבל אנחנו עושים זאת גם מהאינטרסים הישראליים שלנו. אין לישראל רצון שיחיו ביהודה ושומרון אלפי אנשים ללא תעודת זהות, או למנוע מהם פרנסה מכבדת. אנחנו עושים זאת לצד המאבק בטרור שצהל וכל גופי הביטחון מובילים באופן נחוש וערכי. Alongside the parallel tracks which Jerusalem's top defense official mentioned, Gantz also voiced concerns over an increase of nationalistically motivated crimes against Palestinians that were purportedly performed by Israeli settlers, identified by the defense establishment as members of ultra-radical Jewish organizations. ראינו בתקופה האחרונה שורה של תופעות מדאיגות בנושא פשיעה לאומנית. זריקות אבנים, עקירת עצים והפעלת אלימות הן תופעות שלא נקבל ולא נשלים איתן, וההנחיה הברורה היא לחתור למגע עם הפורעים, יהיו אשר יהיו. The defense minister went on to highlight the security establishment's bolstered efforts to confront those responsible in accordance with Israeli law, further unveiling that the same Israeli settlers responsible for attacks against Palestinians also stepped up their attacks against Israeli security forces, including IDF troops. Jerusalem's top defense official continued by asserting, however, that those responsible for the attacks are a clear minority that does not represent the absolute majority of settlers in Judea and Samaria, who are both normative and moral people. לא תהיה סובלנות לטרור ופורענות משום צד. נזכור עם זאת שרוב מוחלט של המתיישבים ביהודה ושומרון הם אנשים נורמטיביים וערכיים, בדיוק כפי שרוב הפלסטינים אינם טרוריסטים. נמשיך לחזק אותם ולשמור עליהם ועל זכויותיהם. Turning to Washington, where U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken hosted his Egyptian counterpart, Samir Shukri, for a U.S.-Egypt strategic dialogue summit said to provide a valuable opportunity to exchange views on key regional security issues. Speaking at a joint press briefing, both top diplomats highlighted the deepening Washington-Cairo security relations, while Secretary Blinken also highlighted the Israel-Egypt peace accord as the bedrock to peace in the region. In the more than four decades uh, since it was signed, the Camp David Accords has been the bedrock uh, for peace in the region. It's helped pave the way for other Arab nations uh, to make peace with Israel. The uh, Egypt-Israel uh, relationship has never been stronger, uh, as we saw in Prime Minister Bennett's uh, recent visit to Cairo in September to meet with President Sisi, the first trip at this level in over a decade. Egypt's mediation efforts were vital to achieving the ceasefire in May between Gaza and Israel and it's committed $500 million in reconstruction in Gaza, among other efforts to improve the lives of the Palestinian people. 
Minister Shukri, for his part, also addressed a point of contention regarding Washington's criticism of Cairo's track record on human rights. Among the long list of topics that were cited to be both interests and challenges of mutual concern, Secretary Blinken continued by citing the Islamic Republic of Iran as the chief destabilizing influence impacting Middle East peace and security. We share serious concerns regarding Iran's destabilizing influence in the region, including its support for terrorism, its ballistic missile program, and the deplorable practice of arbitrarily detaining foreign nationals, including U.S. citizens, to exert political pressure. An Iran with a nuclear weapon would be an even more destabilizing force uh, in the region and beyond, which is why President Biden met recently in Rome with his German, French, and British counterparts to discuss how we can work together to get Iran back into, back into compliance with the JCPOA, the nuclear agreement. It is important to highlight that in recent months, the Ayatollah regime, by means of its Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps Expeditionary Quds Force, has stepped up both fiscal investments and export of domestically made one-way unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, capable of carrying explosive devices that are utilized by Tehran's proxies in Yemen, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon and Gaza, among other theaters of Iranian interests. And while reports of such UAV strikes by Iranian proxies has become a daily recurrence, the United States said it cannot yet attribute responsibility of one such attack, which targeted the residence of Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al-Qadimi. You can confirm that they used drones and the only militias that had drones are the ones who trained and uh, supplied by Iran. Uh, certainly everything uh, that I have seen speaks to uh, the use of uh, a drone. Uh, we have also expressed our concerns uh, with the proliferation of drone technology, some of it Iranian UAV uh, capabilities uh, in, in the region. Again, without speaking to what happened over the weekend, uh, this has been uh, a, a persistent, um, uh, a prominent concern of ours. Uh, as you know, it was just a se several days ago uh, that we announced uh, uh, additional um, policy tools uh, to um, pursue those who have been responsible for proliferating some of this uh, UAV technology uh, in the region, some of which is of Iranian origin. During a separate briefing at the Pentagon, Press Secretary John Kirby was asked whether the assassination attempt against the Iraqi Prime Minister triggered any changes in force protection for U.S. forces that are stationed in the region and have been subject to similar attacks on a sporadic basis. I can just assure you that um, on any given day, our commanders have the right and responsibility to protect themselves and their troops uh, and to help, uh, help defend our Iraqi partners. And, and force protection measures change with the environment because it's a very dynamic security environment, and we rely on uh, our commander's good judgment to be able to handle that the best they can. As for groups, I, I couldn't give you a list of them right now, uh, Jeff, and I don't have a number, but we know there are multiple groups uh, operating inside Iraq that are that are backed by Iran uh, who are capable of these kinds of attacks. Um, again, I'm just not able to get into attribution at this time. Um, again, we condemn the attack, uh, and we're going to continue to do what we need to do uh, to make sure that our, our troops are, are protected and our facilities are adequately defended. It is interesting to know that following the drone strike on the Iraqi Prime Minister's residence, Iran has made extensive efforts to distance itself from any responsibility. While it called for a thorough investigation into the incident, it has also in parallel utilized its supporters in Iraq to repeatedly voice on domestic media conspiracies against the Iraqi government, the United States and Israel. هذه لعبة أمريكية إسرائيلية يهودية ضربوا بيد دولة رئيس الوزراء على مود يوقعوها بالحشد الشعبي. Meanwhile in Iran, the Islamic Republic's armed forces, alongside the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, concluded a wide-scale military exercise this morning, titled Zulfakar 1400. While well, a number of drills were conducted on shore, including a reported maneuver aimed at illustrating a scenario in which Iran invades Israel, the majority of maneuvers were conducted from the eastern parts of the Strait of Hormuz to the northern parts of the Indian Ocean. Furthermore, one reported maneuver took place in parts of the Red Sea, east from the coast of Yemen. 
And while the Islamic Republic of Iran is seemingly trying to deter its adversaries to the west, its proxies in Syria have yet again been subject to an aerial strike by unidentified aircraft. At approximately 7.15 yesterday evening, salvos of air-to-surface precision-guided missiles appeared from the direction of Lebanon, with a calculated trajectory to a number of Iranian proxy installations in Homs Governorate and near the city of Teltus, which hosts Russia's strategic naval facilities that grant Moscow direct access to the Mediterranean Sea. A Syrian military source was quoted on the regime-run Sana News Agency as confirming that the country's aerial defense array managed to repel the missiles of aggression, as it put it, even though he went on to confess that Syrian troops were wounded and some material damage was caused. It is also interesting to know that the London-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that the targets in question were in fact military barracks, the headquarters of a regime-backed prominent military formation, and Al-Shayrat Air Base, where the Lebanese Hezbollah and Iranian-backed militias have been stationed in the southeastern countryside of Homs. Naturally, Damascus pointed a blaming finger at Jerusalem. However, the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm nor deny its responsibility in response to TV7's request for comment. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Estonia in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.